Please welcome back on stage IBM Chairman and Chief Executive Officer Arvind Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Look, we're going to talk a little bit about how we empower youth with technology following on from the video. And I promise I'm going to be brief and then invite a very special guest up on stage. So we are convinced that the next generation of leaders is going to seize opportunities in technology. I think we can all agree, whether you talk about startups, you talk about venture capital, you talk about garages here in the kingdom, you talk about innovation that's happening within existing and incumbent companies, the youth is seizing technology. In the last panel we had in the morning, you talked about that there is a generation under the age of 35 who is mobile only, forget about mobile first. So they are very, very conversant with technology. That's how they like to interact with the world. On my various trips here, I met many young Saudis who are deeply interested in technology. It's actually really interesting as you go through companies, as you go to the ministries, the number of young people who are speaking up on it, who are knowledgeable, who are passionate, who are helping drive the agenda forward is really very, very empowering. It's energizing for those of us who are living in technology world. So as you do this, what is it going to achieve? It is really going to help establish and empower Vision 2030. It's going to make Vision 2030 come to life because a huge part of that vision does include technology, includes digitalization, includes uh, how do you leverage data and technologies like artificial intelligence and cloud, of course leading to the goals around sustainability and climate change and many of these topics. What's the opportunity? Saudi already is one of the leading kingdoms for the leverage of social media and social technologies. I think everybody recognizes it. The kingdom really embraces those. But if Saudi can become one of the premier digital societies, that's a bit more than social media, that is a big opportunity to then, for that can become a competitive advantage in an economic sense for the kingdom. Now, it's important as we go down that path that we don't create a digital divide. It's important that it's an inclusive society and everybody can benefit from this digital empowerment. So it is part of that that you heard us talk about how do we skill everybody to be able to be participant in this, in this digital evolution and it's critical that the next generation of leaders stays close to these technologies, is familiar with them, and can help leverage them for advancement in the business world. The last point I'll make before I introduce our guest is technology serves as a force multiplier. Learning to work with and deploy these technologies is a significant driver for business success. You heard us talk about this in the context of AI productivity, in the context also you heard from some of our innovators on how they're leveraging technology in cyber as well as in digitalization and mobile. So I think it all comes together to how do we help the next generation of youth advance and we've also got to be inclusive on gender. So with that, let me introduce our very special guest. I'm going to have the honor of welcoming to the stage Her Royal Highness, Pris Rima bin Bantar Al Saud, who is the Kingdom's Ambassador to the United States. There is, a, there is such a large number of firsts and unique uh, characteristics of Her Royal Highness. She's the first woman to occupy the position of Ambassador to the United States. She has a rich history in business. She served as the chairperson of the Olympic Committee here. She's a strong advocate for the empowerment of women and the role of women in business and society. She leads efforts to remove obstacles for women in the workplace, including for financial self-sufficiency. And she's also a leading voice in the kingdom's young generation and ensuring their role in Vision 2030. Your Royal Highness, may I welcome you to stage. Hello. 
So first, thank you so much for making the time to be with us today and in helping convey uh, your messages to our audience. Thank, thank you for having me. It's, it's for me an absolute pleasure to be here. So Your Royal Highness, you're widely known as a champion for women and youth empowerment. Can you tell us a little bit about this mission and the journey that led you to pursue this path? You know, I always tell people that I support the activities on the inclusion of women for a simple purpose. That if we want to have a healthy society, you can't have 50% of your community outside of either the economy or the social infrastructure. And that is to the benefit of not just the women of our society, but also to the men. So when we think about why we're including women, we're including women to have a healthy and balanced society that is male and female. So it's not one at the exception of the other. And my personal journey towards this was simply because when I moved back to the kingdom in 2005, the opportunities I wished I had that didn't exist um, really energized me to ask a question, why and why not? And if something was not legal, then is it simply a societal obstacle? And if so, what can we do collectively to help move forward? And when you ask the question why, um, you have to be ready that you might not like the answer. But then you have a personal responsibility. Will you keep pushing to answer that question, to help change the answer? Or will you accept defeat and it's a no? And sometimes wisdom will say, you have to accept some things you can't change. But also perseverance and hope and dream says, maybe if I can't do exactly what I'd like to do, there's something nearby. Maybe there's sand next to this mountain that I'm trying to solve for that will soften the land that allows the mountain to be a hill. And so never give up is my, my advice, but work around the problem and then you might realize the problem you thought was a mountain was less. And that was my journey, that was my experience in this country and it's what helped me, I think, reach the point I'm at today where I was welcomed, not just from the outside to help be a change agent, but welcomed to come into government to be a change agent. I think there's such a powerful story in there. First, 15 years is a reasonably short time in the history of mankind and the kingdom. Yes. So I think you made a lot of progress. But I think in those words of wisdom, there is also a lesson probably for every business leader in the room that you know, perseverance, work on what can be changed, yes. maybe put aside what cannot be, but maybe come back to it later, maybe other approaches. I think there's so much, I so much that, wisdom in there. It's just a personal journey. But in, in that journey, sir, what I have found so interesting is the resistance that I thought we'd face actually wasn't the resistance I expected because this community and this society is so young they're so ready to dream beyond what even my generation viewed was an obstacle. Yeah. That's, by the way, that's so powerful when you think about both 2030 and then maybe the next, whether it's 2040, 50, mm -hmm. or 60. So moving on from women, in your view, why is youth empowerment critical to achieving the kingdom's vision for 2030? The youth's role is critical because the success of 2030 is a success not just for the kingdom, but the world. And our young people, as many have said earlier today, 70% of our society is younger than 35. And that means they are not just the leaders, but they're also the workforce of tomorrow. They're the educators of tomorrow. And so whatever we, as my generation, can create as a framework and a construct, it is simply for them to leapfrog off of. And so their role actually will be much bigger and more profound than the role of those of us who were under the guidance of Crown Prince Mohammed helping to architect this vision. Because we simply are the architects. This generation is populating. And it's populating in a way where you spoke earlier. They are digital nomads. We are not. My generation are not digital nomads. We're still trying to understand the, the technology of the past Whereas this generation is using already the technologies of the future and they're dreaming of what they need to adjust it for. And that is so important because all of you, whether you're private sector, public sector, whether you're business uh, leaders or employees, you have to recognize you are not the owner and you are not the beneficiary of what you are creating. You are simply an architect that's creating a base work and a baseline 
for this next generation, whether it's a family that's going to come and take your product and use it, or it's a technology that somebody will innovate from, or it's a regulation that somebody will benefit from. You have to keep your mind open enough to know that the next three generations may live off of, depend on, or use what you've created. So think beyond yourself as you're architecting this. Such powerful advice. Partly you're a custodian, partly you're an architect. Mm -hmm. And an architect is a wonderful word because it really implies you're building something that has a foundation that can yes. survive the test of both time. Correct. And also leave a legacy for others to mm -hmm. build off of in turn. Yes, and my success and my generation's success is because of the legacy that the women before us created for us, that the men before us enabled. Uh, I would not be able to achieve what I have achieved today. And by the way, I need you to know, I'm, I'm very honored that people give me credit for opening doors for women, but doors were opened for me. I didn't do that. Somebody opened a door for me. Somebody led the way. I had mentors, I had guides, I had women, like Dr. Basma Al-Umair, Dr. Lama Suleiman, Turayya Al-Ubaid, Mughi bint Khalid, all of these women who really thought that the space that was available for women was perhaps not big enough, but they worked within the boundaries that they had at that time to create more room, and that is what allowed the women of my generation when the Crown Prince came to us and said, what more could we do? We knew what we were asking for because the women before us guided us on that path. And so women cannot succeed without the women before them. Women cannot succeed without the men who are with them. And men cannot succeed, and nor will we as a society succeed as the next generation unless we collaborate. So, so, so. I think your whole point about you need, you cannot ignore half of society no. is so, so, so Look at them, powerful. Here. <laughs> so, um, a couple of uh, questions to maybe uh, close up this discussion. So, the first part what role can technology play in empowering this next generation of leaders? And coupled to the role of technology, what steps can be taken that technology benefits everyone to help create a more inclusive society? You know, you, you spoke about something quite interesting, is what is the equity that can be developed in technology? And that really is dependent on the vision that each nation has. We in the kingdom have built, I'm very proud to say, the interconnectivity that allowed us during COVID to make sure government services yeah. were on track, education was on track, healthcare was able to deliver, and communication was constant. But I really have a fear when I look across the world at the disparity of connectivity and the digital poverty and the connectivity poverty. To me, that is as detrimental as the poverty of the soul, the brain, the education, the poverty of food and money. We have to start cataloging that as a metric of poverty because the future is built on the technologies you're presenting today. The, the queue that you showed us outside will revolutionize the world. And to your point, um, this is their digital nomads, their digital natives, which means it doesn't matter if this next generation is based in Saudi Arabia, if they're in Bangkok, or if they're in Shanghai, or Louisiana. They are interconnected and they're speaking a language that is above all of us in this room. But what happens to the young kid whose village has just been washed away in Pakistan and they are not connected? Who's looking after that child? So I think the power of, of connectivity is what's going to allow this next generation to innovate beyond all of us. But where we have to be careful is how do we create the sense of empathy and connectivity globally that allows the problem solvers who are connected to bring everybody else along with them. Otherwise, we will have a disparity in this world that we've never seen before. And I am infinitely impressed by the ability of the young people of this country to harness technology, the investments that IBM is making in AI, in quantum, in the education system of the kingdom that's pushing forward STEM and engineering degrees. And I think for once, the Middle East may actually be a leader in innovation of technology, and its power is so strong. I encourage you as a business, I encourage everybody in here to remember the power of what you're creating can be destructive if empathy, compassion, and humanity is not stitched into it, because you will be so far advanced, 
and the world will be so far behind you that our ability to lift them and bring them together will not be a matter of an IMF check or a World Bank check. It will be a full-on digital divide, and that could break our hearts. Um, so I think there is profound value um, if we're kind. I think you've just told us that while a lot of attention focuses on economic inequality and people very much focus on that, that's simply an output. Correct. The technology divides would be the input into making sure, or the lack of a divide, Absolutely. into making sure that final inequality does not happen. Absolutely. I think that's a really powerful statement for us all to internalize and then think about the role that we all have to play. I think that's what mm -hmm. Her Royal Highness has just asked us all to, to work on, with education being only one step, but the full uh, the inclusiveness, full the full yes. value chain. Yes. Your Royal Highness, Thank you so much for spending time Not with at us. All. Thank you so it's much a for sharing your Thank thoughts you. with us. So, once again, may I ask the room to thank Her Royal Highness for her comments and for sharing her thoughts with us. <laughs>